This is a PCB that I bought recently, and I'm going to put this kit together. I sourced the parts myself, and now I'm just going to go through and solder them on one at a time, starting with the resistors. I thought I would just sort of diagram this as I go along. Why not? Uh, one hand camera operation, so I'm not going to be able to solder as I go, but I can show you the steps as they are completed. Um, and here I've got some electrolytics and a couple ICs, a trim pot, and I'm going to think about what kind of potentiometers I want to use. For this particular uh, PCB, what you're supposed to do is mount the, piece, uh, the potentiometers on the back of it, and then you kind of bend them over. And there's going to be four, excuse me, I'm getting on the camera here, there's going to be four potentiometers on the back here. And the problem with doing it that way is when you go to drill into your enclosure, you've got to make sure that you get everything correct. If you instead just like kind of drill the holes kind of roughly where you need them, that looks good and then mount them the, the potentiometers to the enclosure and it's a little bit easier in terms of like if you make a mistake of measuring where the holes should be if you mount the potentiometers to the PCB well you got to make sure that everything is is measured properly so I'll make that decision later right now first things first just get all the low um, the small the what do I want the, the low vertical hanging fruit if you will and uh, one, uh, one piece of advice if you're doing this is to um, clip off the little paper leads that were, uh, where they're kind of glued into because that way you don't have to worry about any of the, the, the glue residue getting stuck in the holes or anything like that. All right, so next time you see this, hopefully all the resistors will be put into here. Uh, this is what I'm going to be using. This is my soldering iron. It's just a weller. And then I've got this, uh, I like this little this gummy tack stuff right here to hold the components down when you flip it over so they don't fall out. Got the resistors in and they're all tacked in with the tack. Now I can turn it upside down and just solder away. You got the resistors soldered in and now I'm just going to snip off the excess leads and then I like to store them in a bag for my own projects that I work on. The holes for the diode are very close together so I have to bend it this way and I'm not a fan of that so much so when I put this in if I can I'm going to have to hold this with one hand, turn it upside down, and then solder it in very carefully. Next are the non-electrolytic capacitors, and I'm going to use my fancy ones that I've assorted over the past few weeks and months. All of the non-electrolytic, non-polarized capacitors have been soldered in, and I'm going to focus on this, what looks like a transistor, but it's actually an integrated circuit. It's a voltage regulator, a 5-volt voltage regulator that's going to provide 5 volts to the PT 2399 delay integrated circuit which is digital and it can only run off of 5 volts. Normally I would put sockets in at this point but this is a guitar pedal and the way I look at it with stomp boxes, guitar pedals, they get stomped on and this is the one time when you probably don't want to use sockets so this time I'm not going to use sockets. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the electrolytic capacitors next. They're going to be a little bit tricky because I don't want them to be flush to the board because I want to be able to bend them back. Uh, one of the things that I looked at in the instructions was that all of the capacitors were bent over. They even discussed this in the instructions a little bit. And I think the reason why is because when this goes to be put into the enclosure, you want as much wiggle room as you can get. And uh, some of these capacitors that I have are kind of tall. And having them bent over, it's going to get like uh, the whole circuit's going to shrink down in size a little bit. Slight change of plan. I found these shorter 1U capacitors, so I'm going to use these instead. I am raising these electrolytical caps up a bit higher than normal so that I can bend them over and now this gives me a lot more clearance. Next up are the integrated circuits and a trim pot but before I do that I want to check the voltage to make sure that everything is going to where I think it's going to be going. In other words I want to make sure that the PT2399 is going to receive 5 volts on the pin that it's supposed to and nowhere else and likewise for the op amp. Actually it's a dual op amp. Um, but then after that I'm, uh, yeah, I'm also going to check the LED. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. We have power the LED is working, and I can probe various points around the board for some voltage. So I can look here at pin 1 on the what would be the PT2399 chip, and I can see that I've got about 5 volts. That's, that's correct. If I look over here on pin 8 for the op amp, dual op amp I should say, I've got my supply voltage. And here on pin, was that 6 or 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, I'm sorry, 5. Is my uh, is one of the non-inverting inputs, and I've got my bias voltage, and then likewise over here on three, if I can get to it, I've got my bias voltage. Okay, this looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and put the chips in, and then the trim pot. 
everything but the wires and the potentiometers has been soldered. So what I'm going to do next is give the back end a really good clean with some alcohol to get all of this uh, residue off, this flux residue. And this is what I use. It's like a big toothbrush with this uh, anti-static paper and a lot of alcohol. And it does a really good job without leaving um, a crazy mess of all the little like cotton fibers all over the place that a Q-tip might. Okay, that's a clean board right there. And now I just need to decide how to mount these uh, potentiometers. So I really want to solder them directly into the back. I'm not even sure that these lugs are long enough uh, to be able to get down and then bend this all, all the way back. If I do, if I do it this way, I'm not going to want to push this all the way through like such. I want to kind of leave it a little bit raised up to give like uh, the most play that I can. Anyways, I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to think on that. So I want to finish this up another day. I decided to give it a shot anyways, and looks like that was a bad idea. Oh well, I'll get these out when the time comes. But for now, I'm going to use them to test with, which will be tomorrow. Well, I decided to go ahead and test anyways, and it seems to be working. So the next step is to just get these potentiometers out and figure out how I'm actually going to mount them into an enclosure, which honestly is the hardest part. So I'm going to go ahead and chalk this up to a success, even though it's very noisy. Probably just because of the way that it's set up right now with this breadboard and, of course, my terrible preamp. It's a it's a pretty nice little delay though. It's got some it's got some dirt. It's got the ability to self oscillate and sound really 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 awful, which I always love. And so that this concludes part one of the video of making this little pedal. And hopefully there'll be a part two soon. Thanks for watching.